Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, the big bear himself, the big short, Michael Burry, has closed his $1.6 billion bet against the market with a huge loss. Folks, this is a bullish sign, and I'm going to share some other interesting things that happened today, for example, with CPI, as well as the anticipated rate cuts from the Fed. So we are seeing an alignment of different items that are leading us back to the bull market from a macro perspective, and that will mean more liquidity coming into the markets, both for stocks, cryptocurrencies, and so forth. As I've been stating, quantitative tightening will not last forever. I've been talking about this for the past year. There will be a point of when this ends, and then we will be back in quantitative easing cycle and more liquidity, more money will be out in the market. Rates will start to be cut. So this is why you have to be patient and take your positions, buy the lows and get ready to sell the highs. So Michael Burry uh, closed his $1.6 billion S&P 500 and NASDAQ short position for an estimated loss of 40%. Folks, this is very bullish because Michael Burry is one of the biggest bears. The man is always trying to short. And the fact that he closed these shorts at a loss against the entire stock market, right? The NASDAQ and S&P 500, very bullish. Now, don't get me wrong. He did open some short positions on the entire semiconductor sector, but those are for specific type of stocks, right? It's not the entire uh, stock market. So he will continue his shorts. He's a perma bear. That's fine. But the fact that he's capitulating at a loss is very bullish. That's a big indicator. He sees that, hey, things are starting to move upwards, right? There may be corrections along the way, of course, but we are out of that downward trend and we are in a uptrend. So that's important to take into context. Now, of course, I say that, but I don't have a crystal ball. I can't offer any guarantees, but I'm saying that looking at the charts and the different factors and fundamentals. And look, black, black swan events could happen, right? I think we have to make sure that we keep that in the back of our mind. But from a macro and, and overall, all, we are in the uptrend. And remember earlier this year, the man, uh, Michael Burry was <laughs> tweeting out sell. He often puts out bearish tweets and then he deletes them and deletes his account. I don't know why he does that, maybe to cover his tracks, but he was tweeting out sell. And now, of course, he's selling his short position. Now, the other interesting news is that CPI comes in cool. So no rise in the headline CPI Core CPI rises by just 0.2%. Economists had expected a sequential headline increase of 0.1% and core up 0.3%. So inflation going down, things are looking better. The other aspect is uh, Fed interest rate cuts now seem to be starting or will possibly start in May based on trading and Fed funds features. So I think the markets are starting to recognize hey, we're at the end, the tail end of this quantitative tightening cycle, and we will be back in quantitative easing, I think, in 2024. Rates will start to possibly be cut in 2024. Once again, not guaranteed, but I think the, we're seeing different factors leading towards that, right? That's why I'm sharing this news while it's not crypto specific. It is the macro specific, and that means more liquidity to come into markets, both in stocks as well as crypto. So with that said, we can anticipate prices rising, and of course, it aligns with the Bitcoin four-year cycle and the bull market, right? Funny how that works. The other aspect is the DXY, the dollar currency index, is crashing. Usually when it's crashing, assets start to pump, right? And when it's pumping, the DXY is pumping, assets start to decrease in price. So different factors aligning here, folks. I am bullish. I've been talking about Bitcoin moving to its retracement to about uh, 40 to 50K, then uh, mini alt season, then a pullback, of course, but a slow, steady growth to new all-time highs in, I think, 2025. It could potentially happen in 2024, but I think it will be most likely 2025. So I'm bullish, folks. I think the writing's on the wall as far as the macro and that macro uh, factors and liquidity will, of course, trickle down 
to the crypto markets. So I hope you see the picture I'm trying to paint here and you understand the different factors, right? We have to look at this holistically. We got to get a full lay of the land. When I started to understand these different things and liquidity and quantitative easing, the impact on assets, it's when I understood how to take my positions and make money in the market. So let's jump into some news, guys. So yesterday we talked about the BlackRock uh, XRP ETF filing being fake. Um, obviously, someone lied and put together a fake application and it went on the Delaware uh, government website. But uh, we got news here that uh, the comment from the Delaware Department of State, they said, our only comment is just that this matter has been referred to the Delaware Department of Justice. The spokesperson for uh, the, the government agency said, uh, Eric Balkan is, uh, of Bloomberg said, damn, some someone out there is crapping their pants as we speak. So whoever put together this false filing is going to be in trouble. So let's see where this goes. Now, we also got news here from Kathy Wood, who actually did quite a few media appearances today. She made a few statements about the SEC and Gary Genser and the Bitcoin spot ETF. So we're seeing a lot of people calling out Gary Genser, and he's in a very weak position right now. So she highlighted or alluded to that he has political ambitions, and uh, which is standing in the way of the agency approving a Bitcoin spot ETF. That's certainly one of the factors. Uh, Gary Genser wants that treasury job. But the other thing, as I've been stating, he's been slowing down these crypto startups to allow his Wall Street buddies to come in. Just think about it, right? All of a sudden, there is a ramp up to get this Bitcoin spot ETF. Why? Because BlackRock entered the market. But the applications have been around for over 10 years, right? Uh, the Winklevoss twins filed so long ago and many other companies filed, Grayscale, obviously. And now all of a sudden, Gary's looking and the SEC's looking because why? BlackRock, Fra Franklin, Templeton, and all their Wall Street buddies are here. I think it's pretty clear, right? You can put two and two together here and see what's happening. Some other statements she made is, this is decentralized, transparent network. You can follow all the activity. It's highly unlikely to be manipulated. She's talking about Bitcoin. And Gary Genser knows this, she added, having taught a course in crypto and blockchain at the MIT or Massachusetts Institute of Technology prior to being SEC chair. So she's clearly highlighting the guy knows about crypto. And I've been saying that. He didn't all of a sudden do a 180 and he's against crypto, but rather he's trying to slow these startups uh, down and uh, kick out, you know, he's trying to kick out Coinbase and, and uh, Binance and Ripple and Grayscale to let the Wall Street crowd come in and take over, to let Fidelity and BlackRock come in and take over. Now, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold. Uphold is a great crypto platform that I've been using since 2018, so I can vouch for this platform. I've interviewed their CEO, their CFO, and many other representatives. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. You can buy Bitcoin and all the top altcoins. They have a great app and a great platform. They have full reserves. They are audited, so you can rest assured your funds are safe. They don't commingle or lend your funds out. You can also trade precious metals on this platform, as well as 37 fiat currencies, and they're available in over 150 countries. So if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. All right, let's move ahead. Some other bullish news that I'm seeing is the Tether Treasury is at an all-time high. There's so much USDT in that treasury, and we're seeing movements of USDT to different exchanges. So today, uh, over 100 million USDT was transferred from the Tether Treasury to Kraken. The other week, I think about a billion was transferred to Binance. So I think we're seeing this money being moved to buy Bitcoin and other crypto. Uh, obviously, it's not guaranteed. But when we've seen this historically, it has led to the market pumping. So uh, very interesting. And the timing, of course, once again, aligns with the macro. It aligns with the uh, crypto cycles and so forth. Now, we got some very bullish news coming out of China. And once again, I want to emphasize this is coming out from China. Folks, I've been talking about it all along. China has been playing chess all the smoke screen and the smoke and mirrors moves about banning crypto and, and banning Bitcoin mining. That was all just a facade. We see Hong Kong and, and even China itself is opening up to crypto. So China's largest board and card game company, Buya, if I'm saying that right, B-O-Y-A-A, -A, to acquire $90 million worth of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Folks, would they be doing this under the CCP, right? If if China was anti-crypto, 
Of course not. It would put them at risk, but uh, they are doing it. And we're just going to see more companies put uh, crypto in their balance sheet. So let me give you some details. The online card developer joins a list of public companies seeking to point entry into digital assets. Subsequently, the initiative to acquire the digital assets was crafted by the board of directors. Moreover, the plan is currently pending approval from its shareholders. So they published this uh, information and they're planning to do it over the next 12 months. And it, it was confirmed on you know their respective published updates. So folks, I think this is a trend we will continue to see. And the fact that it's coming from a Chinese company is very interesting. I hope you, you see what I'm talking about here, right? Because if you've been here uh, as long as I have, or even just in, you know, for, for let's say five years, you've been here five years or so, uh, you've seen so many narratives and so many uh, anti-crypto you know, narratives come out of China. And now all of a sudden they are all on board. Very bullish in my opinion. Now, Jeremy Allaire, CEO of Circle, highlighted that Circle, uh, they have launched their USDC distribution platform in Singapore with local banking rails and regulatory supervision under the Monetary Authority of Singapore. This has been a huge undertaking and supports our significant expansion activity in Asia. Folks, we are seeing crypto companies expand globally, very bullish. And uh, look, stable coins are going to be a big part of the token economy, along with CBDCs, along with digital assets and cryptocurrencies. We are headed to that token economy where everything's running on the blockchain. And Circle, obviously being the second largest stable coin in the world, uh, they are looking to overtake Tether, of course. And I trust Circle and USDC more than I trust Tether. But uh, you know, competition's good. And I think this is a big move to for them to expand to the Asian markets where Tether primarily reigns as king, right? So uh, very interesting to see these things play out. Now, we got to talk about Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, as he would call himself. This man is out here shilling a new crypto exchange called M2. So he tweeted out today, the days of the crypto cowboys are over. Abu Dhabi's M2 exchange is exactly what this industry has been searching for. An exchange that is regulated, backed by billions of dollars and tied to huge financial institutions. This is promising for the crypto industry. Boy, it's like Groundhog Day, right? We've heard this story before because he was saying the same thing about FTX. And we know he got paid $15 million to shill FTX. So this guy should just shut up and go back to Shark Tank and talk about other investments. He has already tarnished his name with crypto and FTX because it wasn't so much that, look, uh, you know, after everything collapsed, the man kept defending Sam Beckman, Fried, and FTX and trying to blame Binance when it's like, dude, we know what's happened. It's not Binance. It was FTX. FTX was co-mingling funds and taking customer funds and sending it over to Alamedia. They were the ones using QuickBooks to manage billions of dollars and all kinds of nonsense, right? So he's lying and trying to, I don't know what the hell he's trying to do. I don't know if he's just trying to cover his ass, but now he's shilling M2. So we'll see what this exchange is about, but I wouldn't touch it. I, I want to see what's happening here because uh, it's either he's getting paid again or he has a stake in M2. Um, but, you know, the silver lining here or the really positive item here, he, he, it's an Abu Dhabi exchange. So that shows the global expansion of the crypto industry. And there's probably some big backers behind M2. But I need to see more. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't want to take Kevin O'Leary's word for it. Is what I'm so trying to say, right? I want to go see who else is backing this. What are they doing? How are they custodying assets and so forth? But I'm surprised that they are letting this guy go out there and promote their exchange, given that there's already so much information out there about him and FTX. So I wouldn't want him as a spokesperson after what happened to FTX. It would just tarnish my brand. So. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But he should just like stop talking about crypto, dude. Take a break. Go away for five years. Then maybe come back because your track record is really horrible right now. Now, finally, we got news around Polygon um, with the native token of Matic. And I'm very bullish on uh, Matic. I hold it in my portfolio. We see a lot of brands are using it. And it's a layer two solution, uh, scaling solution for Ethereum. So OKX Crypto Exchange is going to use Polygon CDK to build a zero knowledge proof powered layer two network that connects the 50 million plus OKX user base to the broader Ethereum community to allow anyone to take part in a 
truly secure and unified global on-chain system. So we're seeing more exchanges are building these layer two solutions. I think they recognize that uh, Coinbase, what they did with building base as a layer two with no token, of course, um, they're making a lot of revenue off the uh, the fees, right? The gas fees and so forth. So uh, I think they see it as a, a revenue model now to integrate and uh, grow their business. Look, I'm not upset about it. Uh, we'll see how how it you know grows and how the adoption goes, but you know it's still under a centralized system. So we'll have to see how this all pans out. You know, I, I, this is all new. And uh, I'm sure more exchanges are going to do it. I think I, I heard Kraken is looking to do something similar, but let's see how it pans out. I'm not, I'm personally not building anything or doing anything with these uh, respective layer twos by these exchanges. So let's see what happens. But uh, nevertheless, interesting that all these exchanges are, are in a race now, a competition to do this. But I guess it's just game theory playing out, right? Um, so they're going to call it X1. So that's interesting. Coinbase calls theirs base, and uh, we'll see what Kraken calls theirs. So, <laughs> uh, well, folks, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the five star rating on the podcast platforms, folks. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter or X, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Links will be in the description. Also, sign up for the free email newsletter. Thank you for your support. Thank you for listening or watching, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.